This is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to NCC Unplugged. We're so thankful that you are listening for this special episode 50. No, I don't know if it's episode 50 or not, but I thought that'd be a really fun introduction. 50 is a lot. Hey, what's up? This is Matt, the media director, and I just want to break in real quick to let you know that I accidentally told Jeff we were getting close to 50 and it might have been the 50th episode, but it is definitely not the 50th episode. So I apologize as he continues to make reference to this being episode 50. It's like 37 or 38 or something. So enjoy. It is. I think we're over 50. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So there was the celebration for a few podcasts ago when we hit 50 and we didn't recognize it. Okay. There you go. So there you go. I wonder, I wonder how many of our listeners have perfect attendance to listening to the podcast. Yeah, I, perfect listening. Is that? I, I'll, I'll admit that I don't. Oh, I haven't listened to all of them, Joshua. Oh, I have. I think my whole family has. <sighs> but that doesn't mean we get like stars in our crown or anything. You're right. So You're right. Hopefully everybody's making wonderful, amazing choices with their time, even if they haven't listened to every episode of NCC Unplugged. That's right. Uh, but we're thankful you listened to this one. If you still are, they may have stopped at this point. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Not our, be not our best introduction. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, uh, so maybe you saw by the title, we are going to talk a little bit about our Thursday night service. Uh, we've had a few, mm -hmm. and I'm here joined uh, with Joshua. I'm Jeff Terpstra, the preaching minister here at Norwin Christian Church. And uh, if you've been here at NCC or you just clicked on this uh, podcast, we're thankful for that, that and that you're listening. Um, we have, in the past... Three weeks, I've been doing a Thursday night service. It is uh, a worship service, just like any of other worship services. It's not in addition to what we do on Sundays, but it's uh, to add on to what we do on Sundays. In other words, it's it's um, an additional service. Um, most of the same songs, same mm -hmm. sermon, uh, community meditation, all of that. So uh, we've had a lot of questions. Hey guys, how's it going? How's Thursday nights going? And so we want to address that a little bit just uh, for everybody that listens and just for those that are curious. We really appreciate those questions because it means you care. It mm -hmm. uh, means that you're you're wondering about the body of Christ and your brothers and sisters. And it's funny, at a bigger church like ours, um, you know, so we run about 500 people or so that mm -hmm. uh, even if all our services are on the same day, you just don't see those other people in the other services. And so it adds on a little bit now that it's a different day of the week. Um, you know, we just don't see everybody. And so for the most part, you and I are able to, which is mm -hmm. great. And so a lot of people just kind of asking us, hey, how's it going? How are people doing? Who's coming? Uh, talk about that a little bit. So Joshua, mm -hmm. in your mind, answer that question, not just in your mind, out loud to us, because we don't want to sit here in quiet. Uh, tell us your answer to that question. How how do you think it's going? Yeah, I, I feel like it's it's going, it's going well. And it's, you know, it's a learning experience for us. It's uh, I think the first time in the history of Norwegian Christian Church to have a service mm -hmm. like a Sunday service, mm -hmm. not on Sunday. So mm -hmm. we knew it was a big step going in. It's something we had prayed about for months and months, really felt led to. But I think it's going well. We were hoping, our hope with the service was that we were going to be able to reach people, people were going to come that we were not seeing at our Sunday services, people that we felt like for the most part were not Maybe they weren't going anywhere on a Sunday because they had a schedule conflict. Uh, maybe their health just made it hard for mm -hmm. them to go out earlier in the morning. And what we saw on Thursday night has it's really been that. It's been that yes, they we are we are reaching people that were not consistent and here on a Sunday, somewhere else on mm -hmm. a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we we just really feel great about that. Yeah, it's it's nice to know what what we thought about our community was true. You know, that there's people out there that um, I've even experienced uh, one conversation I had with somebody that, that had some church hurt. Okay. And so to say, hey, come back to Sunday service uh, was was harder for them to hear, um, hey, come come to a Thursday night. It's a little mm -hmm. bit pared down, less people. That was an easy entry point back to church than a Sunday morning. Like Joshua said, we've seen several people, and not, not just several, I mean, we've seen dozens of people coming in that 
uh, for whatever reason, Sundays were difficult. Um, and one demographic that we've been able to reach that I've heard from different people is that mornings are just very difficult for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is because they're on some medication that, you know, just they needed to sleep in. Another was on chemo and the chemo treatments made, made mornings just really difficult. It was slow getting out of bed. Once you're up and active, it's a little bit easier. So Thursday evenings really work. Mm -hmm. So that's when she's been able to come. And so it's just, it's neat to, to hit, um, the demographic, these demographics we didn't even know were out there. We knew Mm -hmm. there were some of it, um, but to see the response by people was, I think, greater than any of us anticipated. Um, and that's often how God works, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the Spirit kind of pricked this in us, and every single, I'd say probably every single Sunday and every single Thursday, I've heard from from people, because some that come on Thursday also have been coming on Sunday, and they've said they are so grateful for Thursday, every single time. Um, whether it's because what, you know, the different situations that they're in, but they're so thankful. Um, we were willing to think outside the box. They're so thankful that it wasn't just a, Hey, we're going to do one at 8 AM on Sunday morning because that's the easy route. Uh, we went with a route that was maybe a little bit difficult for, um, us to kind of, kind of change our rhythms around. Right. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and so because of that, uh, they just appreciate, uh, the effort and, and it's not just us here. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's a all. lot that, you know, someone gets here early to, to start the coffee pots and somebody's, uh, preparing communion ahead of time. And mm-hmm. we have greeters that come just to greet and security team and so many people that are volunteering in an extra way, uh, to make Thursday nights happen. Yeah. And something, something is happening on Thursday nights, which also happens on Sunday, but I've just I've seen it so strong on Thursday nights is people inviting friends to come with them. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's some people where they have responsibilities on Sunday mornings, things that they've committed to serving wise, they're a little more tied up. And Thursday night just has a little bit more of, hey, I've got I've got some freedom, I've got some space, I've got availability. I'm inviting my neighbors to come. And that we've just we've just seen a great reception of people coming. And as you think about it culturally, it does kind of make sense. It's like, oh, if you're just going to get together with a friend, you're going to go out to dinner, you're going to go out and do something. And evening is kind of mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. that time to where we usually do that as a culture. And Sunday morning's a little different. It's a little more of, it is traditionally a church time. But uh, but yeah, that's it's super encouraging just to see yeah. people bringing, bringing friends and neighbors. And just people are really giving us some great feedback about that they... They feel like it's it's a great experience for them, that they're hearing God's Word, that the truth is being presented, that the worship is helping them grow closer to God. And once again, it's not, we're doing some things a little bit different on Thursday, but it's not like we have a different recipe for Thursday. Mm-hmm. Right. It is it is, it is is the same service with, with some tweaks, uh, but it's just encouraging to see that when you, when, when you add something different, there's things that you can't anticipate and we're seeing so many of those in yeah. a positive way. Yeah. yeah, and some of the difference, again, it's not what we're doing. It's just having less people here. It is. You know, mm-hmm. it, it can be really intimidating. So I told you we have about 500 on a Sunday morning. We have two services. It can get chaotic. We don't have the biggest lobby. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of movement back and forth, lots of kids. Um, it's intimidating for you to take a first step into a doctor's office or a dentist's office the first time you go because you're like, well, where do I go? Where's the reception desk? Who do mm-hmm. I talk to? Is this the right door? Because I see 10 in the same building. So we know as a church, now you're talking about spiritual matters. You might have church hurt. You got a lot of burdens or history, and you may be all by yourself walking into a new building and you had 500 people running around. Uh, it could be very intimidating. And so mm-hmm. some of those people that are inviting their friends are like, hey, it's it's a little bit easier to invite them when they're less people. We can talk a little bit more uh, after service. You know, we're going to go to Applebee's down the street together. Mm-hmm. And it's just that more relational opportunity to invite somebody where you're like, hey, I know, I know I'm, I'm going to be able to see them when I walk through the door. So I'm going to invite my friend Joe down the street on Thursday. I'm going to meet him at the front door um, because I'm going to see him. I know it's a little mm-hmm. bit easier for him to get in, um, easier to find a parking spot. 
uh, all that stuff. So it is, it, like you said, it's it's been really neat to see that happen on Thursdays. Um, and, you know, for us as as a church, we continue to adjust our schedule and mm-hmm. uh, there's some different programs that had to move around and we appreciate uh, so many different people willing to uh, be flexible with those things and know our heart. Our heart for this service has always been expanding the gospel mm-hmm. and or not expanding the gospel, expanding the gospel into our community. Yeah. Uh, we don't, we actually don't want to expand the gospel. The gospel is what the gospel <laughs> right. is. Uh, yes. We want to bring the gospel to our community and, 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 and um, we can do that in a lot of different ways. Uh, but as a church organizationally, we're going to do it how we've found to do it with our music programs and our teaching and um, our, our kids programs. And so we wanted to replicate that in the best way. And, and we, um, we found that to be Thursday. And it's it's been working out. Um, and you wanted to talk a little bit about um, just kind of some reflection on Scripture as, as yeah. you were thinking about um, the way we offer this and, and why um, we see this opportunity as a great expansion of not just keeping it to a, a Sunday morning and kind of reserved to those, hey, if you can't show up on Sunday morning, too bad, mm-hmm. uh, but but something beyond that. Yeah, so it's a it's a story that it's a story that we talk about often. We're talk when we're mm-hmm. talking about our growth steps, mm-hmm. and uh, Jesus came to a Samaritan woman, which was outside. She was not Jewish, so that was a big deal. And so they they started having this conversation about worship. So it's interesting that this in John chapter four, this Samaritan woman she comes in this conversation with Jesus, already thinking we're going to have an argument because mm-hmm. I'm Samaritan and he's Jewish, and it's just, of course it's so profound and amazing how Jesus answers, but. In John 4 and 22, Jesus says, You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. And obviously that's true. That's where Jesus came from. But verse 23 really sets this principle. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they're the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So the idea that the woman had presented, she said, Hey, you all worship in Jerusalem but us Samaritans, we live in a different a different part of the country, and mm-hmm. we worship on this mountain. And she knew that the Jews didn't approve of their place of worship, so she was basically saying, "Hey, how are we gonna how are we gonna fix this? You know, mm-hmm. how can I, Jesus? How can I be part of what you're doing when we worship in a different place?" And Jesus is saying, "Under now, as we all follow Jesus together, it's it's not going to be a matter of going to a specific place." It's going to be about following Jesus. So bringing that into our context is we've had a tradition in our in our country and in our culture of Sunday being a day of worship. But as we looked at Scripture, we realized, hey, the Scripture didn't define the church to only gather on Sundays. Mm-hmm. There's freedom there. Mm-hmm. And so we've chosen to add Thursday in. And so the parallel here is that there are traditions which are fine, but we want to make sure we're not bound by a tradition mm-hmm. that might prevent us from allowing God to reach more people. Yeah. And so I think what Thursday has done and what I've seen in that too is that it reminds us that following God is it's a 24/7 thing that we do. Every day we're following God. If yeah. we're going to school, we're following God. If we're going to work, we're following God. If we're going to the soccer field, we're following God. And all of those spaces we're wanting to follow God and we want to avoid this temptation of segmenting our life. We don't want to compartmentalize our mm. life like Sunday morning is my spiritual yeah. time, and I go check my box, but it doesn't impact the rest of my life. So without getting into a great sermon about <laughs> <laughs> our full devotion to God, I think Thursday night, I've noticed that I think it is it is just helping that truth to permeate through us and the people we're able to reach that, hey, we, we're, we're serving God 24-7. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Thank you for that. Um. So Thursday, Thursday night, you know, mm-hmm. you said is going well. I, I obviously agree with that. I think uh, what we've seen and the people we've seen, um, we've been, so our first week was, was our highest number, right? right. 168 that yes. night. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people just come in checking it out. A mm-hmm. lot of people that already attend NCC wanted to come out as an act of support. And we so appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, the following two weeks after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, right at about a hundred, I think one Correct. week was just over, one week was just under, mm-hmm. um, and so that's you know from the onset where we thought uh, our groove would be. Uh-huh. In um, we have children and the children's programs, and Allison 
uh, has had volunteers helping with that. And depending on how many kids, uh, mm-hmm. they, they're, they're structured in different ways. Um, and so we're just, we're excited to offer full programs there that night. Um, and so that hundred includes adults and mm-hmm. kids. Um, but it's, it's been just a really neat, energizing thing that happens on Thursdays. It is. And, and yeah, and just, just to, just to reemphasize what you're saying that like you, if you do have children and you're thinking about Thursday nights, you know, come out because mm-hmm. we've got, we do have us uh, programs geared for their age from birth through sixth grade available. And so we just, we just want you to know that they're available on Thursday nights and they're, they're very much in line with the Sunday programs could be a little different in how they're mm-hmm. organized, but uh, that's definitely, def, definitely available. And so, you know, it's a different vibe. You talk about a Sunday where you've got you've got 250 or 300 people, depending on the service, mm-hmm. and you've got those transitions. And it's a lot of people. I'm an extrovert, you know, and I, I really, I feed off of the energy of people. But there's a lot of people, as you mentioned earlier, it's like, that's just the, that amount of people in, in certain spaces can mm-hmm. feel a little bit overwhelming mm-hmm. to them. So Thursday, Thursday night has a very laid back yeah. vibe to it. And yeah. it's also helped us as as staff and leaders to just get to know people better because it the, the ratio it's just a different ratio of how many there is of us to how many people we get to meet and serve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so as a reminder, our Thursday night service happens at seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been doing good on our word. We're getting out eight, eight oh five. Uh, so about an hour long yeah. service. Um, two Sunday services, 845, 10:30. Uh, we're continuing to uh, be faithful to God and, and what He asks of us in this time. And I just really appreciate those questions of how everything's going and inquiring of that. And so just want to give you an update through this podcast. Appreciate you still listening. And um, I was going to make a promise that I'll listen to everyone from here on out. Oh, you don't have to do that. Do I need to listen to podcasts that I'm on? You know, I, I've I've kind of thought about that question myself, but it it I get very interested and curious because I'm not sure what Matt may have done. You know, maybe maybe he like put like a, a fancy voice change in or something yeah, like that. Re edited so, you out completely. Yeah, right. And you it can could be. send him an be. email. Yeah, but. yeah. All right. Well, from here on out, we'll try to get that box attendance box checked of listening to the podcast. Remember, no extra jewels in your crown. Okay. All right. Well, we do appreciate you listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged and listening to us ramble on for a little bit. Thanks so much. Thank you for tuning into NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services, Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.